So uh, we have a brand, listen to the land, Fakarongo Kite Fenwa. Everything originated in 2018, 19, when a group of us tried to put together a proposal for the government data science propo uh, project. They had, I don't know, 40, 50 million dollars to distribute for three or four big proposals. So we thought that we can give it a shot and see if we can help them to spend that money. Uh, it was a fantastic exercise. Many people here contributed. I have fantastic letters of support from different institutes from the whole entire world. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, Ian. Thanks a lot of people. And that triggered the uh, long-term thinking. Uh, we didn't get the money. We were competing against the main universities, but it was an excellent exercise. And it still proved that in my 50s, I could spend three days without sleeping preparing a proposal against the clock, which, I don't know, was interesting. Uh, and then this comes as a consequence. Can you hear me well? I, I, I have a lot of echo here, but if you can hear me well, that's the only thing that matters. Okay, thanks. Uh, I'm an entrepreneur since ever, uh, since even before I realized that. When I arrived in New Zealand, people asked me, what do you do? Well, I don't know. And then I had to study something. I mean, I studied engineering in Uruguay. As I say before, you learn hydraulics, you learn Fortran, you learn a lot of calculus. So I had a math academy for decades, and then I put it on the internet. So I had my dot-com so in the late 90s, early 2000s. So as a good dot-com, it failed. But uh, it's a long story. We will drink one day and we'll share that. So every decade I do something which keeps me focused on that. <laughs> and in the decade, that my first decade in New Zealand was about venture capital and that I created a company which later did deals with Sun Microsystems, so hence the multi-core era that was very interesting. The past decade was about the square kilometer array radio telescopes, so the company Open Parallel was officially selected by the New Zealand government to contribute to the SKA. That was an excellent exercise to be in the Exascale era 10 years ago. Uh, so, but essentially, I'm just a guy who is pretty good at putting things together and have some entrepreneurial hunch. I'm not a programmer, I mean, maybe I am a manager, but I'm an entrepreneur. And also, I understand different cultures. And uh, as I ask everyone, tell me something different. How many of you do you have three citizenships? No? Okay. I do. <laughs> so, uh, born in Uruguay from Hungarian parents, proud Kiwi. Pretty simple. That's why I married a clinical psychologist to help me with identity crisis. Still works. I've been saying this for a decade. Um, the point is that when you, and I'm a professional migrant, so I'm so used to lose everything in a country, then I go to somewhere else and start from a, Same happened to my family in Hungary. They were relatively well. Uh, I never witnessed that, so, but there is a story that my mother was taking to the high school in uh, Mercedes-Benz with a chauffeur with white gloves. That was before the war. By the middle time of the war, it was my grandfather driving a Fiat Topolino with a Nazi officer and the two girls behind. And by the end of the war, it was nothing. So there is a photo of the bomb that made a hole of that uh, big house that they had with six servants. And they used to have a balcony on the opera of Budapest. But that's one side of the family. The other side of the family from my father, peasants, peasants from Hungary. And they just converge in a country, Uruguay, which in the 50s, 60s was the New Zealand of the time. They made it, they split the rest of history, but that creates a different cultural set that makes you in some way hungry, but in other ways trying to find identity. And that applies a little bit more with the concept of Mataranga Maori that I will try to present in a few minutes. So, um, after a career doing stuff in one way or other, you start to think in bigger things, long-term things. I have ranked So you start to think, okay, how can I think on problems that will leave a better world for my grandkids? And then you see these things, which what do they have in common? 
Uh, if you know that they will happen, you can predict it, you can work on it. So the point in common is data. Uh, but there are not single and simple uh, situations. They require big science. And I learned a lot of that, that with a decade of the, with the SKA kilometer radio array. And well, I thought that this community should be able to help. And then you come into general information about agriculture. And this is just outrageous. So, and this, I mean, we can dispute the data, doesn't even matter about the sources, but the numbers are just absurd. So uh, you produce or try to make the food, it doesn't even cross the gate. And then even if you consume, it's wasted. And we can witness it just here. It could be a numbers game, but it's... And the problem is that where, from where you generate human sustenance is still uh, the oldest engineering uh, system, which hasn't been readjusted. It's tried to be digitalized, but it hasn't been updated. And of course, this is another challenge. We can keep going. But then we have these challenges, and the supply chain, thanks to COVID, is something that I don't need to highlight as I did before that. Uh, but we are talking about human for survival of the species. So, and we are been discussing fantastic systems, exceptional uh, modeling. Why are not trying to push this into the primary sector? So about seven, eight years ago, I was working with the SKA. I knew that those computing platforms should be useful for something. And I started to think about precision agriculture. That's when I went to my first conference. I met Professor Ian Yule, who is here, which I mentioned in a minute. And out of entrepreneurial hunch, I came with these five tenants. I should say copyright or all this somewhere, but I don't care. And year after year, I keep repeating them. As, I'm not saying that they are written in stone, but I just keep finding them true. So everything that you see in the primary sector is technology that is being thrown up but has been proven and used before. So um, you don't create technology from the bottom up. It's things that are already exist in the market and has been adapted to that system, uh, which creates a heterogeneity. You have vertical companies, and that rings a bell on the, I don't know, 50 years ago when you had IBM here, you have one, you have a digital, everything was vertical, and you went with one vendor the entire life cycle. So you have the integrations, and that brings all the... Um, sorry identity or data sovereignty problems that we discussed. And this, I mean, from the entrepreneurial point of view, we know in the standard MBA or entrepreneurship courses that the best way to have a new market is just to follow what the government is going to regulate. A prohibition or a license or a franchise suddenly creates a market and then you have an opportunity or a crisis. If you follow the news, you will see European farmers protesting about this and that and those. Same happens in New Zealand, happens all over the world. Regulation means, I've been discussing all this morning, uh, regulation is uh, policymakers trying to keep things right, avoiding keeping things wrong, but that, like always, you shake things somewhere, they fall apart somewhere else. It, 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 I'm not criticizing this, just recognize the system. And then cybersecurity, this is a question that I asked to Rob about uh, tampering, spoofing, risk management. I'm not trying to say that we need to have a supply chain which is, cannot be tampered. Understand the, man the risk involved. Uh, Duncan will talk us, speak about that. So, in which context? I, that was the thing that I, how, how we think on this. I want to think in this in terms of uh, this, which is a slide from Raja Koduri, which I understand that is no longer with Intel, who knows where he is. Uh, it, it's, this is not, this is just standard marketing thing. But uh, people, I mean, again, as an entrepreneur, you think in terms of how uh, the general user thinks. And the other day I saw a tweet about someone say people don't realize what a billionaire is or what a trillion dollars is or a trillion parameter was. I mean, scale is important. So this box, people still think in these terms while we are talking about this. 
So what about if we think on the systems from this point in order to deal with the reality which is sometimes here, and in agriculture is particularly here. It's, uh, I mean, the challenge is in the primary sector is that, okay, stop taking notes with pen and paper. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that, but when you integrate, when you scale, when you process, when you share, it's better if you have things that you realize. Well, still, if you have things in your own iPad that are not connected, so, but we are here. So how do we bridge this gap? That's what I'm trying to do with this project, which I call it, listen to the land. And the comparison with this, which is understandable from our world, not just the HPC, but I call it the digital world or the high tech world, versus this, which is coming from the Wageningen University, which I didn't know about its existence for about, I don't know, eight or 10 years ago. That's hydraulic students. I knew about Delft University in the Netherlands, but so Wageningen is the Stanford <laughs> for uh, agriculture. Literally set, sets the standard. Now, and uh, this is actually uh, <laughs> with permission of the author, but if you look at this, from our point of view, it's a positive criticism. It's bullshit. <laughs> so it's a lot of things put together and a lot of, uh, how can I say, this is smart control, so what? Where is the flow? Where is the rationale? Well, it's just an image. Now, I present these things depending on the audience, and they say, wow, 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 but I understand this. So that's a cultural thing that I'm trying to uh, share in terms that if we are going to try to do this from here, we need to understand that we are talking to people who think that this is how it works. This is how things are putting together. So what's available? This sends to Ian, who on the 2019 uh, proposal sent me some documentation. And I will comment about this uh, diagram, which I found it extremely useful for my case, not the diagram itself. But what is available? Okay, open source software. RISC V, it's open source standards, not open source hardware. But RISC V, it's a thing, right? And it's comparatively new. I hope that this audience understands. It's not the uh, part of the talk, but just let me tell you something. China is making a lot of progress in RISC V. Architecture is something that the US government is starting to be worried. Affordable sensor means not the ones that you can buy on uh, Radio Shack, <laughs> or you can buy on, on your stand. It's the high quality sensor that can do a lot of stuff with computer vision, with AI. And when I say what's available, we have a lots of data. That was a comment earlier in the first talk in the morning when I challenged one of the presenters about the data coming from Planet, which is one of the providers of global uh, data. The same with Airbus or whatever. Is your data but treated by someone else? Neither. So these are the things that I call that are available. But then I will start to ask myself, well, this is also available concept. There are no breakthroughs through. But if we're going to talk about the sensors and a new system, should we considering a new concept of topology? If we're going to distribute all the information at a big scale, shouldn't we look at the operating system or are we using the standard ones? Are, am I uh, falling in my contradiction to say that I will do big things but still with outdated technology? So I will try to put exascale or whatever using outdated technologies or can I try to think in new topologies, new definitions of operating system? Again, I'm far from an expert. I just put words of others together. And that's it. from an entrepreneurial point of view, from someone who is prepared to front the ideas, the best way to start a conversation. I don't know, teach me. I'm not sure, explain me. Let's put things together. I'm delusional, I'll prove it. And, that, and that's the point of the conversation. What I do know, and this is also a quest for New Zealand as home, the difference between platforms and APIs. Being an entrepreneur in high tech, sometimes build an app or whatever, and that always runs on a platform. Music, uh, Uber or whatever, the one who owns the platform makes the real money. 
Similar things could be said about digital twins, which is a big buzzword. And again, having one of the world experts here, we will, she will speak soon in the evening. I won't claim that, but I want to include that in a vision in a couple of slides. <laughs> but what I want to comment is that the concept of complexity is natural in the primary on the agricultural world. You know, holistically, that a plant doesn't grow on its own. You have water, you have cycles, you have spirituality, and I'm not talking about religion. So the concept of system of systems is not an abstraction. It's been by millennia. So that's what I try to use this as a digital nervous system. Like, let's try to design a system that can capture data in order to um, go to the grand challenges because they are all related in one other. So that, that's, that's a, the point about the digital nervous system. And then back to why I'm presenting this, obviously you, don't, you can't read this, but the different layers, it's a fundamental knowledge plane, enabling technology-based plane, system integration demonstration. Why I'm showing this? Because the high tech for the digital world, for the high tech for the agriculture, people think that is this. You have the satellite, you have the drones, you have some underground sensors, wireless on the ground, and that's high tech. Guess what? It's not. I mean, it is. It's much better than it was five or 55 years ago. And then you have analytics in the cloud, but all this apparently happened to happen, and that's it. They missed the whole point of what allows everything to happen, which there is an analogy with AI as well. I mean, the same buzz about AI means that, oh, where chat GPT is all fantastic and the black box underneath. So I started to, okay, how do I think about this? Anyone have seen this before? I'm not saying the association. This looks like, all people maybe remember 2001. It, this was well before. So looking around, my inspiration, of course, was the SKA. It was a privilege to be that. It was a fantastic experience, the worst, fun, the worst financial decision that I took, but as I always say, I have good credit cards and a fantastic and understanding wife. So, but I learned a lot in a decade. If you have been following European funding destination Earth, from the European Union is to build a digital twin of the entire weather system, and it's an exascale project. The difference between Destiny and SKA is that they rely on the hardware for the, well, it's a Euro HPC or, uh, they don't have their own hardware. So, and when they are jealous of SKA because they just have no control of the hardware. They need to ask for hours to process. How you can model weather if you need to be in the queue? But what interests me is that this, and I won't go so far, but that happened 50 years ago. And coming from South America, very fond of, uh, Management cybernetics. It's just a management of information and they use it to optimize processes. It was operations research, which no one of these are actually doing. I call it competitors for the sake of say something, but I mean, Microsoft is very strong. Mineral.ai is a moonshot from X, which is the alphabet. And Vidya and Omniverse is the platform that is trying to own everything. And Jensen wants to build uh, digital twins for farming. And then you come into John Deere, which is my equivalent of the Microsoft uh, 50 years ago. Because in the computer electronic show a month ago, John Deere presented this, which is not a video game. This is a harvester. This is a harvester, which literally automates uh, cotton planting, harvesting completely. Now think about it. I've never seen a cotton plantation but it could be something standard. You just pass the machine and collects and seeds and fertilize or everything. You solve immediately a lot of problems. Now, one of these machines costs, I don't know, half a million dollars. The data goes who knows where to the John Deere cloud. The bank owns half of your mortgage. Remind me which business are you in? What do you own? That, that, that's a problem that I'm worried about. And I'm talking about the production, yes, you sorted out uh, the labor issue, 
But these are problems, and these are happening. So what could possibly go wrong in this world? This is uh, Bloomberg, uh, a few years ago, 21. Modi, I have no much exposure into India, but just gave uh, to Amazon, Microsoft, uh, the data in whatever format from farming in India, which is a significant scale, into the big guys, which will digitize it, and guess what? Sell it back to the farmers. They own data. And so that, I repeat, where is the control of the information? What could possibly go wrong? I mean, just showing open questions. So what I'm trying to do, I call it an agriculture decision engine, which is a system where the data inform and refine the model. Now, if you have complex systems in real time, that big compute, and you need to deal with different sources of inputs of data, because one thing is to have the crop, other thing is to have the soil, other thing is to have the fertilizer, other thing is to have the price of the market. Other thing is to know what happens in the war somewhere else, or if the Houthis are bombarding vessels here and there, how that influence the price of my crop? It's all connected. How? I'm a farmer and I don't know. In my knowledge ends at the gate and I'm at the mercy of everyone. Shouldn't be like that. And that's where I submit that if we create a core platform where every farm can its own digital twin where can manipulate that information and can have that uh, resources of the data captured at plant level or cow level if you want you really can measure climate change you really can optimize everything i'm pushing the boundaries perhaps but it's not impossible so the different variables whether soil are interacting with markets and what about if we integrate all these variables, the weather and soil and the market, in one system for the entire life, an entire data life cycle? If we can, and this is where what I'm trying to think how feasible is or not, a platform with a low-level technology where a user then can extract the information. And these are, you need to put words, multi-scale system, the data goes up and down, extra scale to the edge is just a password, but sounds extremely sophisticated outside this ring. So, but what we came up with, just what we call the, it's a little bit small, but digital nervous system. This is what, this is the, the today supercomputing. Here is the cloud, here is the user, but down here we have this uh, new generation nodes, which will be the skin. And then you have aggregators of this data. And the point is that you can put these things at less than one kilometer distance. And you say, why won't you do that? Well, don't you have the satellites? Of course you do. Owned by whom? Positioned where? When? Moving that. Dealing with space debris. There are a lot of variables that make this, at the very least, desirable. I'm not saying essential, but desirable. In an ideal world, you complement things. So I call it a supercomputer. In terms of doing one kilometer scale simulation, that means that you will have 250,000 nodes to cover the surface of New Zealand, which has a land mass of 267,000 square kilometers, or any other country. Uh, I'm not the tech guy, so my colleague uh, Richard O'Keefe came with the numbers, and then the peak power demand will be this too, which is comparable with the Cetonics, which is at Posey, which is the number 25. Can we call it as a supercomputer? Well, we are dealing with a monumental amount of information happening at the same time at nationwide and then at catchment or at farm size. Which so what I have done so far? We started to think about these terms. I'm really proud this was accepted after peer review. I mean, it's SC23. Uh, I'll manage, I'm not sure if it's here or not. Uh, Barney and Nicola from Argonne, and Avinash, who maybe you remember him from Intel, but now he has his own company. Uh, Avinash did, uh, it was Nehalem, or can't remember which chips was he leading, but anyway. So we had this panel, then we have 100 people attending the year to discuss these topics. So, and this was just uh, a month and a half ago, so it was Nicola, Barney, 
Manish was wearing a tie because in the morning was just awarded the Sydney Furnace Memorial Award, so that was cool. And Avi Nash is there. So this is a community. At the very least, I can claim starting a group of people who are interested in agriculture and supercomputing as an intersection. Is this going to go anywhere? Well, let's see. I will submit again the boss, the boss of the Federal Session for S24. Uh, we wrote a paper. Ian collaborated. Richard is not here for health reasons, but hey, it even got published. My age index is probably 0 0.1 or whatever. But uh, there is people in the world who think that these ideas are going somewhere. So there were 300 people listening to me in Cartagena, Colombia, which is a very nice place in front of the Caribbean, so beat that. So, and hey, I've been published. My mother will be proud. What else we have done? We came up with the idea of how would be, sorry, how would be the design of this uh, small these weather stations, these sensors, this autonomous weather station. We submitted that proposal. We asked for, I don't know, quarter or half million dollars. We were unceremoniously rejected by the Ministry of Primary Industry, but it was a good experience. It forced us to have a three prototypes. I, and it's not intended to be a venture capitalist style invested, but it's just say, hey, look, what are you talking about? This. This go at the bottom of the capture. And I started to ask questions, and I will finish soon. But I just want to highlight this, because this is the strength that I'm showing. I'm good at asking questions and bringing people together, and maybe you recognize a few names here. And the point is not just to name names, which of course is cool, but to s if maybe you can follow the sequence of what are we thinking. So, chiplets. Know Bappy? You know Bappy? Someone knows Bappy? No one knows Bappy? Yes, you do. At least one or two. Well, this is the Open Compute Project, which has been around for, what, five years? More? Less? Anyway, this was a very interesting uh, session at supercomputing about the open chiplet economy. And then I learned from BAPI that Fanhofer and Samsung have a platform that helps you develop your own chiplets, which brings us the conversation about technology independence. Now, and this Horizon, Horizon Europe, it's a funding model that, let's not go there. Now, Kiran, she has been here last year. I repeat on my distributed uh, model, let's say uh, continuing computing, uh, photonic. Well, we can think about, of course, she's the champion of and then you ask that question, of course you will say that it works. I have it on record. I did an interview in Multicore World 23. But then I ask, uh, you know this guy, Olivia? And we had here, that was another panel, so I started to ask questions. And then we came about, I mean, Polar Fly, it's, again, my knowledge of topology is extremely limited, but my understanding is that after Dragonfly, you have another fly, and then you have Polar Fly. What's the one in the middle? Slim. Mega? Okay. So uh, this is a diameter two or something that. Um, but Laura from Los Alamos was here, and the co author is our friend Thorsten, that some of you will see next week in Sydney. My point is, I have no problem of bringing friends together and ask questions. Still means nothing if you're unable to put anything together. At least I look clever in front of some people, means nothing. This was an interesting conversation with Rick, which probably you know from General Electric. Uh, and I was trying to uh, ascertain the concept of topology and he bring me the industry perspective. I said, okay, set it up and start to perturb it and see what happens. Stop making theory, make it happen, see what happens. I mean, you don't need to deploy it in an entire country. And then, well, I still need to learn about what is this topology optimization and, and joint state method. But this chap, which I spent some time in this place in Tucson, Arizona, a character that you know, Barney McCabe, former Oak Ridge, he asked me a question that I'm still struggling to find an answer. Which problem are you solving? You want to build this architecture, you want to build this system, to solve what? And I can be esoteric and go back to my original grand challenges, and this all very philosophical, but what are you solving? That's a question that I need help with. 
this is another round of questions that we did with Paolo and Pete and Jim. They were so kind to... I mean, I'm privileged to have the time of excellent friends to <coughs> sing together, and that's what I'm trying to highlight. You don't always need to make uh, mm, fantastic breakthroughs to solve certain problems. This is just two slides from here. Uh, by the way, this is uh, technology prediction. Regen Agritech is something cool. So this is, um, I mean, this is public. They came out a few weeks ago. Uh, 40, 50 colleagues from IEEE of the world think that uh, Reg N is one of the things to look at in the next year or whatever among general AI, among new materials, with everything. So anyway, what I'm trying to say is that we will keep doing the supercomputing. The panel is due the proposal 26th of April, the board should have failed. So if you want to help, I welcome every help. Horizon Europe, I started to do the connections with the New Zealand chapter, the people's long story. But what I want to also highlight is Poitou te Fenwa Fatungarongaro te Tangata. The land is permanent while people come and go. Why I want to highlight this? Because when we have a capitalistic approach, we have a business plan, we have a roadmap which could be anything between one and 20 years, depending if you want to build sophisticated technology or just to keep quarter to quarter. You talk to people of the land with Maori and they will tell you about a hundred years business plan as a start. And it's not just a cultural difference, it's a strategic difference. Think on business terms, not in terms of spiritual or a cohesive relation of uh, a group of people. Makes sense thinking on these big problems in long term beyond yours truly or us or everyone. That that and well and then I I want to put uh, these things together. I want to come back in a year and have a much better presentation. I have twenty questions to ask you, but that's why we have a conference for. And the conclusion is that in Western concepts, where is the money? I mean, I used to be a VC once upon a time, which is just a license to spend other people's money. But uh, there is no some, okay, I discovered this. No. But the technology is all together, and it's not trivial to implement. And yes, I have good credit cards. I have a resource much more important than money, which is time and willingness. But again, I'm the bottleneck these days. Ownership is not trivial. You have this system, you have this data, you have everything. That is, where is standing? Are you donated to the government? Is this philanthropy? If I go back as an entrepreneur, I need to justify to my chief uh, financial officer, also known as my wife, why are you doing this? Well, I'm putting things together in a place where we are creating some leadership, and if things go wrong, I still can be a consultant. It's like going to... Um, do gold mining and then selling showers or jeans. You are still in the, in, in the market. So I learned this in South Africa. If you want to go fast, go alone. But to go far, go together. And I really want to go far. Thank you very much.